Do you have your kingdoms confused? Hey Saints, got another random firing neuron for you guys. John chapter 18 verse 33 through 37 says this. Then Pilate entered the praetorium again, called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him and said, Are you speaking for yourself about this? Or did others tell you this concerning me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you unto me. What have you done? And Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered and said, You say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Presently, we're in a bit of a tug of war. Whether it be political camps or causes or ideologies, it seems like the world is hell-bent on pulling us one way or the other in hopes to make us identify with one side or one team of their preferred preference. And this tug of war can happen on practically any issue, any topic, or any moral stance. But when it comes to these things, as a believer, we have one basis by which we stand on any principle. And that basis is we stand where scripture stands, even if that means pitting us against the world. And when you stand upon the firm foundation of the word of God, you do so at great cost. Now, why? Why do we incur such a cost for standing upon something that is truth? Because as Christians, we are foreigners to this world. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 20, Paul even refers to himself as an ambassador in chains. Note the two conflicting kingdoms that are mentioned in that verse in Ephesians. One, an ambassador. An ambassador is an emissary from another kingdom that is representing their home kingdom in a foreign land. And two, in chains. That means Paul at the time was subjected to the earthly kingdom's rules, regulations, and laws. And he did so as a prisoner unto the cause of Christ, his true king. Paul's predicament as a prisoner in the middle of the conflict between two kingdoms really highlights what Jesus was saying in response to Pilate's question. My kingdom is not of this world. Saints, the New Testament scriptures defined the church in such terms as alien, foreigner, sojourners, tent dwellers, people who are waiting for a city that is not built with human hands, but built by God. You, saints, are an ambassador of Jesus Christ, but you are dwelling in a foreign and hostile territory. So do not get your kingdoms confused. To bring more clarity to this idea, Jesus tells his disciples to store up their treasure in heaven where earthly entropy cannot dissolve it. That means when it comes to the priority of the Christian as an ambassador in this world, we have a stronger desire to win souls than to win elections, to win hearts more than winning arguments, and to win the approval of our king more than the approval of men. Now, this admonishment should apply to Christians of varying eschatological and doctrinal stances. How, you may ask? Well, regardless of whether you're dispensational, all mill, post-millennial, pre-millennial, dominionist, or whatever other doctrinal stance is your preference, two things are abundantly clear in scripture. Second Peter 3 and Revelation 21 say the same thing, that one day this earth and all of creation will be burned away and destroyed. And remember, whether you think the millennial reign is literal or metaphorical, it is not the final destination for the believer. After this earth, is wrapped up and burned, scripture tells us that there will be a new heaven and a new earth where we as believers will dwell with our creator and savior Jesus Christ for all of eternity. That is our final destination and that is the kingdom that we represent on this earth. The second thing that is made abundantly clear in scripture is this, you are going to die. That fact really highlights why Jesus told his disciples to store up their treasure in heaven. Because what you fight for on this earth is as temporary as the earth itself. Don't live your life today 
fighting battles that have no implications upon heavenly rewards. Lest your king say to you on that day, I'm sorry, but you fought for victories that were earthly and temporal, and they have no bearing here. Your treasure is thin, and your crowns are light. See, elections, arguments, and approval of men only weigh something here. But souls, hearts, and God's approval is what weighs something there. So saints, don't get your kingdoms crossed. Store up treasure in heaven, because where your treasure is, there your heart will be also.